in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall. is that true you welcome to another spirit there is no guarantee that you will always find a man in his office if you're new to this channel there is no guarantee that you will always find a man in another place or institution but there is there is every guarantee that if you are patient enough is going to bless you no matter where that man would have gone to he will eventually return home thank you for watching is that true when you travel out of this nation for many of us who you know, your phone will show you different dates and timings. It will tell you um, details from your own time zone, and then it will tell you where you are. And when you return home, it will let you know that you are back home. It knows when you come home. So the house of God is not just a place where believers converge. The house of God is where God has covenanted. He said, this is my, the psalmist said, now arise, O God, and come to your resting place, you and the ark of your might, that he covenanted that he will be with them forever. Hallelujah. The presence of God is what makes all the difference. Minus the presence of God, we're just making noise, at best, just motivating and inspiring people. But the presence factor is what is responsible for life. Are we together? And the Bible assures us, according to Psalm 133, that when we are gathered together, it says, there the Lord hath commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. That means in the presence of God, you expect to be healed, you expect to be lifted, you expect to be changed. Are we together? That whilst you are seated and the word is coming, is more than mental transformation. There is something happening to your spirit, man. May that be your portion tonight in Jesus' name. So we'll go straight to the business of the night. There is a lot to deal with. And as always, I would request that you pay rapt attention. Jesus spake a parable about the word and he said the sower went to sow. And we understand from his own interpretation that the word was and is the word of God, the seed now. And as powerful as the word is, the Bible says it fell on four kinds of grounds. Do you know, in studying this scripture, the parable, I just want to buttress on something and we'll get to the word. Um, I've studied it many times in my life, but in my recent study, I became amazed as to why the sower will give even a rocky ground. Any farmer and any sower already knows that there are some soils that there is no need wasting your seed because they will not grow. Yet he gave every ground a chance. When you sow on rock and you sow on thorns, if you are truly a farmer, you should know nothing will come out. But so that he will not be charged with bias, he gave every soil a chance even though it was clear that nothing would come out. That's God for you. Good ground, rocky ground, on thorns and thistles, and gave all of them a chance. And the Bible clearly told us that some produced, others did not. And even among those that produced, there were three levels of harvest, 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100. And speaking about the good ground, he said there are those that hear and understand what makes your ground good is those that hear and understand that the ones that fell on good ground were the ones who heard the word and then they understood hallelujah so we pray for the grace for the hearing ear tonight in the name of jesus god has declared to us that this is a year of open doors i believe it with all my heart and I'm glad and I rejoice exceedingly in my spirit that many are already experiencing the wave of this prophetic word. The word must speak clearly in your life this year. Amen. If you believe that, shout a louder amen. amen. 
So Luke chapter 11 will continue our discussion. We're discussing, we started last week discussing exceeding great and precious promises. The goal was to open us up to the power of the promises that have been made available to the believer in Christ. And remember, I taught you at the first service that when it has to do with opening doors, please pay attention that the Bible gives us three, three platforms for opening closed doors. Number one is the use of the right or the correct key, not just keys. You can use a wrong key, the door would still not open. And we understand from scripture that keys refer to knowledge. Are we together? Number two, the art of knocking. Matthew 7, 7 and 8, ask, it says, and you shall, it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find. Knock, it says, and it shall be open unto you. For the law in verse 8 says, everyone that knocketh, it shall be open. So one of the ways that doors are open is through the art of knocking and that you must understand what it takes to be able to knock a door. Are we together? There are doors that you may not have the keys to. You will need to knock for that door to be open. And then number three, we said the use of force, the supernatural, and the power of God. What I want to share with you tonight, I have watched it lift people from literally nothing and brought them to positions of grace and power I have also watched the neglect of what you are about to learn take people from grace as it were to grass. The purpose of the teaching of the word of God is to give us wisdom. At the end of any spiritual discussion, if you do not have wisdom, then it was not the word. Remember the Bible says that was the true light that lighted every man. That means there are false lights. They carry a semblance of victory. They carry a semblance of liberty. But you find out that upon engaging them in real life, they do not produce any results. May you not waste your time chasing shadows. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you not waste your time acquiring a lot of useless spiritual information only to find out that they are impotent to deliver that the truths that you find and keep, may they be truths indeed. Amen. And the only way you know the truth or the only way you know what is real is when you test it in real life situation. So pay attention tonight and God is going to be showing us how to knock because there are many doors that stand before us right now and we must know how it is that men, those who know how to knock doors, will keep flipping doors open from one dimension to the other. But those who do not understand this can stand stagnated in front of cheap doors, sometimes even for many years. Every door that has refused to open, perhaps the door that stands before you, you do not even have access to the key. May the mystery you will be learning tonight cause that door to swing open for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Opening destiny doors through relationships. Opening destiny doors through relationships. Opening destiny doors through relationships. Let's go to our text, Luke 11 from verse 5. Luke 11 from verse 5, opening destiny doors through relationship. Atmosphere shift now, chains be broken, break out, Holy Spirit, move now. Hey. Luke 
11 and 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? Pay attention now. And shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. Uh huh. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Follow the story carefully now. Verse 7. And he from within shall answer him and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. Are you following the story now? I say unto you that though he will not rise to give him, but because, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And then verse 9 says, In this similitude, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Last verse. For everyone that asketh receiveth, he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Let's go back to verse 5. And let's begin to observe a few things. Number one, the Bible says, which of you shall have a friend? Everybody say, have a friend. Have a friend. So this issue of opening doors is among friends, not strangers. Are we together now? When the guy was in trouble, he did not run around. He went straight to his friend. He said, which of you shall have a friend and go to him at midnight? That means only a friend can accommodate that level of inconvenience. You do not go to a stranger by midnight, he will arrest you. It is not usual to go and bother and disturb people at midnight, but that there is an advantage that friendship provides that even at uncomfortable situations, or uncomfortable circumstances, rules can be bent over. And the secret is that a friend, he said, who, which of you shall have a friend? And then go to that friend at midnight, notice, and say unto him, friend. The person in need did not call the one who he wanted him to help by his name. He invoked the relationship. He didn't say, Joseph or Stephen, come out. He said, friend. In other words, under normal circumstances, you should be offended. But I am reminding you that the platform upon which I am making this demand is friendship. Lend me three loaves. Are we learning already? Verse 6. Notice again that the purpose for his meeting his friend is to help honor another friend. Are we following now? There is a reason why the Bible is teaching us this. You know, when you read the Bible, you have to read by the Spirit. Otherwise, you will not see anything there. It will be before you, yet you will not see it. A friend of mine, that means someone else too came to me. It's not my fault. Ordinary, ordinarily speaking, I should be sleeping. But someone else inconvenienced me and I had to bend over because of relationship. And so also, I have come to you. This friend came from a journey unprepared and he I don't have anything to give him but because he's my friend I will not drive him away I opened the door of my house to him but now I am stranded as a person so I must do the same thing he did too are we following now and then he went to his friend and he said friend sorry for disturbing you this night can you open the door for me verse 7 the Bible says and he from within shall answer and say trouble me not notice the guy within never called him friend he didn't re reciprocate and say oh my friend you're outside no 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 he was angry and said no please go away trouble me not the door is now shut and my children are with me i cannot rise and give you now hear what jesus says verse 8 i say unto you Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend. Leave the other things that he's talking about. That means there are two possibilities here. One, he can arise and give him because he's his friend. Is that true? And then number two, he can arise because of importunity. The word importunity there is the word persistence. Persistence almost to the point of annoyance. Are we together now? So that this door can be opened 
through friendship and because of friendship. Two more scriptures and then we'll begin to discuss. Relationships are very, very powerful. In Proverbs 13 and 20, Proverbs 13 and 20, the Bible says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. It never said he that is around wise men, he that walketh with them. Are we together? That you move as they move. He shall be wise. That means when the man started the journey, he was not wise. His friends were wise, but he was yet to be wise. His secret was that he chose to walk with them. And the Bible says he shall be wise. That means you can predict the future of that person. Even though at the point of beginning that journey, the person may not yet be wise. But because he has chosen to keep a wise relationship, the Bible guarantees that he shall be wise. But a companion of fools. Now, we don't know whether that companion was wise before. We just know that the people around him were fools. And the Bible says he shall be destroyed because of it. Are we together? Yes. In Matthew chapter 4, I believe that should be verse 19 or there about either 17 or 19, Jesus beckoned on the disciples and he says, follow me and I will make you. Follow me, 19, and I will make you. I will not make you when you stand from afar. I will not make you when you sit afar wishing. I will only make you when you follow me. Follow me, he says, that is the price for your making. I've taught you here in this house that destiny fulfillment, you may want to write this down, destiny fulfillment and advancement is practically impossible without relationships and strategic connections. Destiny fulfillment and advancement is practically impossible without relationships and strategic connections let me take it one more time destiny fulfillment and advancement is practically impossible without relationships and strategic connections hallelujah so it is impossible to actualize destiny and to make constructive progress in your life ignoring this deep spiritual mystery that is is a master key to opening doors relationships write this down please relationships are bridges to an exceptional life bridges from the word bridge b r i d g e s relationships are bridges to an exceptional life and relationships are also bridges to a life of pain and regret. Oh, I just spotted Pastor Akin. God bless you. Such an honor to have you around. Let's give him a big God bless you. Dear friend and brother, God bless you, sir. Thank you. Hallelujah. Are we together? Relationships are bridges to an exceptional life. That means from where you are, looking at an exceptional life in Christ, a life of kingdom impact, that the bridge that you have to cross to that realm are relationships. And standing before you and a life of pain and regret and destruction, they are also relationships. Relationships are bridges that lead to an exceptional life. Relationships are also bridges that lead to a life of pain and regret is someone learning very very important information about relationships remember we stated first that destiny fulfillment and advancement is practically impossible except and unless through relationships and strategic connections now we're saying that relationships are bridges both to an exceptional life and a life of pain and regret the last information I'll give you here is that relationships are currencies. It's not new to us in this house, but please write it now with revelation. Relationships are currencies. Like you have dollars, you have pounds, you have naira, and so on and so forth. Relationships are currencies. 
They can buy what money can buy and they can buy what money cannot buy. Relationships are currencies. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ, listen. They can buy both what money can buy and where money stops, they can go further to buy what money cannot buy. For instance, money cannot buy you your salvation, but a relationship in this case with the Lord Jesus can make salvation a reality in your life. Let me announce to you first and foremost, dear people of God, you know by now, but it, it bears repeating again that money does not solve every problem. Are we together? I'm not downplaying the relevance of financial resources, but it is a miracle for you to find, to believe it early, that money does not solve every problem. Are we together? Relationships are currencies. They are currencies, my goodness. They, they have high level purchasing power. They can buy what money can buy and they can also buy what money cannot buy. I have prayed a prayer for you many times in Koinonia and let me pray it again. That may you never be so poor that all you have is money. Did you get the prayer? That may you never be so poor that the only thing you have in your life is money. Men have risen to enviable destinies from very modest and sometimes shameful backgrounds using the leverage of relationships. The Bible ancient and modern history is full of the autobiography of ordinary men and women who did not have any comeliness to be desired but they meandered across this mystery and through the ladder and the lift of relationships they rose to enviable positions spiritually economically sociologically politically and so on and so forth and the bible and even history is also full of men and women who neglected the power of this mystery of relationships some of them threw away relationships to look for money men like judas iscariot and they lost both judas had a relationship and he threw away a valuable relationship to pursue a lesser kind of thing money at the end of it he got the money but now losing the relationship the money did not benefit him and he lost both in fact he lost everything including his life are we together now the easiest way to succeed in life and destiny is through relationships this is this is a fact the easiest way to succeed in life and destiny is through relationships there are many factors that are there in the success equation and all of them are useful and they have their place but i can tell you few of those factors come close to the excellency of understanding and engaging this mysterious key of relationships hallelujah are we learning already for someone all that i've said alone has been the washing of the water just delivering you because there are many people all they see in their dreams while they are awake is money everything they see is money they don't care who lives and who dies the most important thing is let there be money and we have this understanding that our entire life will magically be relevant when we have money may not necessarily be so destinies are enhanced and glorified through relationships my concern for tonight with respect to uh, our discussion using relationships as tools to open doors i want to discuss with you the tripartite dimension of relationships that must be at work in your life for doors to be open this this is our subtopic this is the core point of discussion there there are three three fold dimensions of relationships that if you do not have in your life 
There is no future for you as far as open doors are concerned. Number one, your relationship with God. Let's go very quickly. We have a lot to discuss. The first dimension of relationship you must focus on. If you desire relationships to be a tool that open the doors of destiny is your relationship with God. Matthew chapter 22, please give us from verse 37. We are reading to 40, your relationship with God. In that order, Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, help me, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Next verse. It says, Then thou, this is the first and great commandment. 39. It says, The second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. 40 now. On these two hang all the law and the prophets. That means every, every law that ever came by the prophets, the dictates for the nation of Israel was to get them to achieve these two things. The law for God and the law for men. Are we together now? Your relationship with God. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. A scripture that has become an anthem in my own life. My son, it says, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. This is God asking not just for your tithe, asking not just for your offering, asking not just for your membership. He's looking for your heart. Are we together now? My son, he says, Give me your heart and then let my eyes observe your ways. Second Chronicles 15. Second Chronicles chapter 15 from verse 12. We are reading 12 to 15. The first dimension of relationship that makes for open doors as far as life and destiny is concerned is your relationship with God. The Bible says, and they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with all their mind. Verse 13, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. 14, and they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and trumpets and cornets. The last verse now, and all Judah rejoiced at the oath. They bound themselves with an oath to seek the Lord. For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire. Is that in your Bible? And he was found of them. What was the result? And the Lord gave them rest round about. Not just because they were intellectually sound. Not just because they were... Um, educationally advantaged or sociologically advantaged, they had wealthy parents. The Bible says they bound themselves corporately with an oath that we will seek the Lord. And that anybody that violates this will put that person to death. Whether child, whether adult, whether male or female, that when God saw the seriousness of their heart to seek him with their everything, he gave them rest round about. Are we learning? Hmm. Matthew 19, 26. Very powerful scripture. I know you've read it, but I want you to look at it very carefully. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men, this is impossible, but with God. Everybody say, with God. God. There are things that are only possible with God with God with God all things are possible this is the implication of a healthy relationship with God it defines the extent of the possibilities that you experience do not make a mistake of believing that just because you are saved it means every possibility will manifest in your life automatically no every possibility should manifest as far as the finished work of Christ is concerned. But entering into the experience of it depends on a functional, ever-growing relationship with God. Let me tell you the truth. There is nothing in this life, there is no one in this life, please listen very carefully, that should sustain the ability to take the place of God in your life and to interrupt your work with God. 
anybody that succeeds to do that is the person you should worship because that person has become God and the jealousy of God will fight anything and anyone that stands his way even if he's the one that gave you that blessing I hope you know God can fight what he gave you the moment what he gave you becomes an interruption to his place and his purposes in your life it becomes his enemy just like Satan God created Satan and he still grants us the grace to perpetually defeat him he's not forgotten that Satan is his creation but because Satan has assumed a position where he perpetually cannot bring joy to God again even though God's creation it does not secure God's support again it's important for you to know that God does not just initiate processes he vets them periodically to find out that he's being glorified through them and if he stops being glorified through those processes his his backing ceases except by the mercy of God so you will find many people being destroyed by what God gave them and you'll be wondering how could God give you a blessing that becomes a destruction Saul how could God make you a king and yet that position brings you shame and reproach again how could you be the anointed cherub that covereth a position God gave you and yet your pride came as a result of that position just because God gave you does not mean it to automatically glorify him you have to be intentional about using everything around your life to see that Jesus is glorified are we together now thou shall love the Lord your God please look up there are many believers today who ignore the issue of having a healthy relationship with God when you say it like this most believers think it is just a press into fanatism and they say you know what the way me I serve God I'm not into all these Jim Jim Christianity but my own God knows that me I'm serious you can never fake seriousness seriousness is, is so palpable it should be known and detected whether from afar and near I'm not I'm prayerful it's just that it's only God that knows you are a liar immediately are we together now yes sir so many believers do not intend to take God seriously they don't they don't plan to throw him out of their lives but they just want to keep him just at the minimum level enough to hopefully secure life after death in case like an insurance while they go around doing everything they want to do with their lives and let me tell you the truth ladies and gentlemen if you want God to honor you you want to command power and relevance in our world today in order of priority this has nothing to do with Pentecostalism or whatever it is you have to make up your mind please listen carefully make up your mind that you are going to go all out for God some of us when we started we did not start with a desire for ministry we did not start with a desire for fame in fact we did not start with a desire for greatness this journey started from a blind and a sincere pursuit Lord I love you it's an opportunity and it's a privilege for me to be called your own and while we pressed and gave God literally everything he said so this is how far you can go for me now let me show you how far I can go for you are we together do not covet the result of a genuine lover of God if and when you are not mm -mm. God why are you doing this to so 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 person so 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 lady so 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 ministry it is a reflection of the depth of their love for God the Bible says no eye has seen are we still together no ear has heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him not them that use him not them that use him for fame not those that use him to get publicity for ministry not those that use him and climb him as a ladder into a great life there are many men of God who do not love God 
clearly so. There are many church members who do not love God. There are many business people who do not love God. There are many people with Christian names who do not love God. There are biblical indices that show whether or not you love God. So it is not about blind assumption and saying, I love him, he knows. Mm -mm. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. Listen, when you say, God, I love you, you know what he's going to ask you? Let me see what you can give up for me. So be careful when you want to say, God, I love you. We are used to fake love in this, our wicked world, that we think we can play that politics with God. You don't come to him just faking tears and say, I love you. You can roll from left to right, from pillar to post. When you are done loving, he will tell you, all right, Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than this? Do you love me more than ministry? Do you love me more than titles? There are people who would throw God away to protect ministry. There are people who would throw God away to protect their ego. I am a man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. There are people who would throw God away. If their money is falling down, they would throw God and hold the money and say, God, you are a miracle worker, rise back. But this money, if it falls, I don't know if it will come back again. There are people who would throw God away and say, my pedigree, I went to school, I read X, Y, Z. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the men and the women that God will do mighty things with in today's world are people who are dead to every other thing. The price for all of God is all of you. You've heard me say it. The price, listen, the price for all of God is more, you will need more than your brain for God to do business with you. The price for God is more than English and preaching. Oh dear one, it takes more than good English to put a generation at the command of heaven. We are discussing relationships now. Hallelujah. There are, Valentine is two days now after now. There are many people whose lives are going to nose dive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but nose dive. They have not even stayed well with God and they look forward. They are planning all kinds of things minus God. They bought flowers. They bought, they, they paid for the venue that they will use and there is no God in that factor. God, I'm used to you interrupting my joy. Stand back. When I need you, I'll come. This one now, look, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, it is the foolishness of loving God that brought us this far. Never get to a point where you become too intelligent, too Western to become that baby. Hmm. Are we together? There are many people right now, it's pedigree and, pest and prestige that has come to a point where it has replaced God and pushed God out of their lives. You know, when we started, we were poor people, no money, but now we are billionaires, we are talking serious things. My phone can't fall down, my clothes, do you know the amount? And while you talk all that nonsense, the realm of the spirit is watching you. The rich fool in one day came down, his life was even demanded from him. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Your passion for God is not about fanatism and it's not about being a preacher. Do not leave passion for God to just pastors and preachers and say, me, God has called me into entrepreneurship. He knows that I can't love him the way. Who told you that? Go and find out the people who love God as governmental figures like Daniel, as economists like Joseph. They were not preachers. Yet you could not argue their love for God. The question God is asking you right now is Simon Bajona, lovest thou me 
more than this because the way many of us are pressing into life we're ignoring God we're just satisfied that at least I remember coming out for an altar call and I don't care about anything spiritual but if we begin to talk about money and business and rising now you are speaking my language some of you your love language is money repent <laughs> repent now listen please don't don't I'm not being sarcastic I'm serious here teaching are we together now repent You are the thirst, you are the street, you are the hunger living inside of me, you are the food that satisfies, you are provision for the journey of my life. Hallelujah. I will keep saying it for as long as I am alive. I will give up koinonia and close it down a thousand times to maintain my relationship with God. Believe me, this is not just a, an empty talk that I'm saying on stage. Are we together? Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold Something more than gold I've got something more than gold If all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to the world So the first dimension of relationship you want doors to open for you it is with God with God the first dimension of relationship and let me tell you this you are here and you've not encountered the God of the Bible when I make the altar call I want you to run wherever you are just know that this is why Jesus brought you here give us John 17 verse 3 it says and this is eternal life that they may know thee not that they may recite a prayer alone this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true God I have searched and searched all the earth searched and searched all the earth and found that I have searched and searched all the earth, searched and searched all the earth and found that until you get to a point in your life, ladies and gentlemen, where God means everything to you, your love and your passion for Jesus, your love and your passion for the things of the Spirit has consumed you and is above every other desire, then you are not ready for the relationship that opens doors. There are men who will stand in an empty space, but because of their love for God, he will carry a door wherever it is, bring it in front of them and open it. That is how far he can go. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. It's time to return back to your love life. Thank God that this is a period that is celebrated world over. It's a, it's a period of love. Your first love is not your husband. It's not your wife. It's not your children. It was because of him that they all arrived. Don't let their presence drive him. Are we together now? Jesus, the lover of our soul. This is how we started. Blind, sincere, honest pursuit for him. Lord, if you never bless me, you still have my all. If you never lift me, you still have my all. Not Lord, I'm giving you two weeks. If you don't move, don't blame me. All those kinds of things. No. 
I love you sincerely. It is not about preaching. It is not about all of that, no. The song we sing, they all belong to you. And even the air I breathe. your hands on your head in one minute and repent from every kind of idolatry Lord I don't know what has taken your place in my life the pursuit for things the pursuit for fame the pursuit for money the pursuit for positions cry to the Lord this night oh I return I return oh lover of my soul oh lover of my destiny I return church stole my heart from you marriage stole my heart from you a job stole my heart from you fame stole my heart from you naira and cobble and dollars and pounds stole my heart from you but I return someone cry I return I return in the name of Jesus I return Shabrekete perekos kati barus, kati prende ke perekos kotu braskiata. Ah, yaka sabando shodo prekete belegeta. You are praying. One more minute. Take all of me. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, you have my everything. All of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Anoint my everything. out and pray father I love you more than ministry I love you more than prophecy I love you more than marriage I love you more than children I love you more than a job I love you more than business excellence I love you more than financial prosperity Someone pray, someone pray, no destruction. Man of God, it's time for your love for ministry to go behind the cross and never replace your love for Jesus. It's time for your love for fame and power even though carrying the semblance of spirituality to go behind the cross and to see Jesus alone lifted as an expression of your love is good to excel it's time for your love and your desire for material things to move behind in the queue that nothing and no one should sustain the ability to take his place in your life Oh, if I perish, let me perish loving you. If I go forward, let me go forward loving you. If I mark time, let me mark time loving you. If I rise, let me rise loving you. Everything I will ever get that will demand 
my not loving you may it never come Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now listen carefully. When Jesus started with the disciples who would later be apostles of the Lamb, he called them and they became his disciples. But as that intimacy grew, many things started happening to them. One day Jesus said, I no longer call you brethren, but friends. Is that in your Bible? He was, she was telling them something that you have scaled a height. You have demonstrated your love. You have survived a lot. Do you know what it means for God to give you a title called the friend of God? Who in the Bible had that name and what followed the destiny that had that name? Abraham was called more than a prayer warrior, more than a fasting giant. It is a noble title for God to call you his friend because in friendship there are no secrets. There is the opening of secrets. God can beckon on you. Shall I hide this from my friend Abraham? I can hide this from my creation, but not my friend. Abraham, this is what I want to do. Let me give you a chance as a friend. And Abraham came not just as God's creation, but as a friend and said, hold on. Since you have called me your friend, allow me to negotiate. I have an interest in Sodom and Gomorrah. Someone who was my friend before, but allowed the quest for material things to drive him away because of that friendship. Remember the guy in the room did not call him friend, but the one outside still said, for as long as there is one person still carrying that point of connection, he said, let me advocate for Lot. Perhaps if there are 50 people, perhaps if there are 40 people, that was a negotiation that was at the table of friendship. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I didn't call him oh. I am a friend of God. How can I dare call him friend? The creator of the ends of the earth. But I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. So do not be surprised when you see the benefits of friendship following certain people. Do not, the Bible said there is a friend that sticketh closer. Shall I hide this? I don't know who God is speaking to, but there are people here tonight, God is saying there is a deeper level of friendship. Come, come. This nominal Christianity, this surface thing here and there, dealing with God like an idol, like a stranger, as if it's a stone carved somewhere. We serve God as if we are practicing idolatry. There is a functional relationship with proof. Come. 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 There is a river for you. Come. God is pushing someone. Come. There is a deeper dimension, more than just church, more than just nominal Christianity. It's a deeper dimension like Ezekiel 47. Oh, there is a river. God is calling a man of God. Hold on about ministry and come deeper. You will be more effective when you become my friend. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, I hail you, Moses, Shema Sema Nadia, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, I hail you, Moses. Whenever I call you, 
you will answer me because a friend always answers when I call you you will answer me whenever I call you you will answer me hear me there are some of you after this service you may need to rush and go for a retreat God is speaking to you the destiny you are seeing and the level of relationship you are giving God you can't arrive there that is not how a prophetic mantle will land on you that is not how an apostolic call will come it's not by buying suits and sharing cards no there are there are rivers ladies and gentlemen you have to dive deep into the river Job said there is a there is a path that no fowl has seen the webs of the lion has not gotten there very deep dimensions of intimacy with God that is where power resides in the spirit that is where rest resides in the spirit in your time just one more minute declare your desperation take me to the place the place you are the secret place that's where I want to be you are my sheep, you are my covering, you are my stability and my foundation. Take me to the place, the place you are, the secret place. not wasting your time many of you are wondering what we are doing this is how intimacy is developed in the spirit 
press for one more minute. Yeshua Hamashia Komina Nakane Yeshua Hamashia Komina Nakane Yeshua Hamashia Komina Nakane Yeshua Hamashia Komina Listen, there is a realm in the spirit where you would have surrendered everything because you love him. When your hands are empty, not holding anything, then he can hold your hands and you will find out that you have everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Our mundane pursuit of things is eroding our passion for God gradually especially this generation with all due respect it is amazing how incredibly distracted we are in pursuit of many things i have learned from scripture i have learned from mentorship from wisdom and by experience that anything that claims to give you what only god can give you just know that you are dealing with fraudulence there any situation anyone who tells you he can give you what only God can give there are things only God can give he said with God all things no amount of publicity will bring increase to your ministry above and beyond the presence and your relationship with God no amount of intellectual soundness will replace the impact of the word that comes at the instance of relationship May God grant us grace to return in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Please be seated. So the first dimension of relationship is your relationship with God. Ever increasing hunger, passion, fire, love for spiritual things. Number two, what is the second dimension of relationship that is responsible for activating open doors as far as destiny and the purposes of God is concerned? Are you ready? Number two, relationship with men. Relationship with God is number one. Number two, relationship with men. Psalm 8 and verse 1. Psalm 8 and verse 1. Psalm 8 and verse 1. The power of God is coming on four people. Psalm 8 and verse 1. Psalm 8 and verse 1. I saw the number 4. And this is, this is, this is, it's not just you receiving breakthrough or this. It's, it's, it's the cry of the Spirit, crying from within your spirit. God is still telling you, I am still looking for you. I am still looking for you. That pursuit. Let's continue relationship with men psalm 8 and verse 1 oh lord our god pay attention now here comes a very deep mystery how excellent is thy name in all the earth it said who has set thy glory above the heavens reading to verse 6 out of the mouth of babes and suckling 
thou hast ordained strength. Notice what he said. O oh Lord our God, without any man, your name is already excellent. And yet, as excellent as you are, there is something you are looking for that only men can give you. It says, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, as excellent and powerful as you are, there is something that the ministry of men does to you. It says, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. Verse 3. When I consider the heavens, the psalmist is speaking now, the works of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Here is the part, this scripture rattled me for many, many years. What is man? Men never ask that question. They don't care what is in man. He said, what is man that thou art mindful of? You are already God by yourself. You are already all excellent, needing no support, needing no encouragement. You are not threatened by another kingdom and another force anywhere. But what if the angels were perplexed and the psalm is speaking through by the spirit. What is man? The whole Bible is about your relationship with man. Why do you run around man as though you were vulnerable? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou visitest him. Is it not an inconvenience for you, O God, to leave heaven and come to the earth? What benefit do you created all? You can create another reality and ignore this man. But what is it about this man that in spite of his sin and deterioration, his stubbornness, you see the patterns. God's people will experience abundance and plenty. They will deviate from the path of God. They will now be given to the hands of their enemies and they will become slaves for many years. And without them crying to God in many regards, God himself will now send a prophet to go and tell them, I'm still interested in you. Oh yeah, come back to me. The psalmist was contemplating and said, God, is it that there is something in men that we don't know? What is it about men? You make it look like without man, you cannot be God. What is man? Here is how I read the scripture many times. What is in man that man himself does not know? Listen carefully. You are about to learn a very deep mystery. You want doors to be opened? We have given God his place. But I must show you the mystery of men. That if you ignore this mystery, you can as well chain yourself and remain there. Because there will be no motion in your life. It's a guarantee that I give you. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou should visit him. Verse 5. It says, thou hast made him a little lower than Elohim. The word angels there is the word Elohim. You have crowned him with glory and honor. The same man. Six. It says, Thou hast made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Is that in your Bible? Thou hast put how many things? Say all things. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Isn't it amazing? You know, every time I have the opportunity of seeing great gadgets, aircrafts building materials you see man building skyscrapers that are many many times his height and he's not threatened by it individuals who stand and say they want to build something that will almost reach the sky and they will start building it from one block and one one construction material and they will actually do it the wildest of animals on earth have been tamed by man Hallelujah. I once watched a video, I, I can't even remember how I stumbled across it. A hungry and angry elephant just meandered around the road and some people were moving around, I think in a luxurious bus. And they didn't give him anything and he just went, that nose that looks like it's just, it's, there's nothing there. When I saw what he did to that car, it flogged the car as though you are throwing a piece of paper. And I said, can you imagine how heavy this thing is? He stepped on watermelon like paper and crushed it into pieces one time 
and yet man can tame it he said what is man that you have put everything under his feet listen carefully God shows so much passion around man but men do not know what is in men that's why we keep losing if God himself the creator of the ends of the earth did not ignore man God is not ashamed to show his vulnerability towards men he would say things like I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness God is in heaven yet he will tell you that there are many things I sought for a man Ezekiel 22 and verse 30 you would hear God make statements like that and I sought for a man why will God be seeking for a man he didn't say I called for a man I sought meaning as God I kept moving from end to end looking for a man if God is looking for men you better look for men because it means there is something in men if the God of the heavens has not ignored men I tell you respectfully speaking it is lack of wisdom for you to ignore men we live in a world where we pride over self-sufficiency we live in a world where we are very embarrassed to acknowledge that we are incapacitated and that it will take the impute of other people to make us whole and to make constructive progress but here is God the one who is complete El Shaddai the multi-breasted one who declares his vulnerability over man God all by himself and yet he will reach down to man to an extent that Jesus came and died not for himself for man sinless God are we together let's look at a few scriptures Psalms 115 and verse 16 someone is learning now 11516 let's read together please one to read the heaven even the heavens are the Lord's uh-huh but the earth hath he given to the children of men let me request that we read it one more time one to go the heaven even the heavens are the Lord's he gave the earth to the children of men so who are the stewards of the earth now men get this revelation that the stewards of earth right now satan listen to me satan does not own the earth satan is old, only the god of the systems not the earth the power of satan is derived from his partnership with man outside of man satan cannot wield dominion over the earth it was not given to him are we together now he controls the systems the systems now control man so it makes it look like he's controlling man but he's the god of the systems he designed an antichrist system that works upon the minds of men but dominion was given to men if you are not a man you cannot have dominion on earth satan cannot have dominion on earth because he's not a man i've taught you here remember let them have dominion make reference to it that the condition for being a man is number one you must be a spirit if you are not a spirit you cannot be a man number two that spirit must be hosted in a material body and that body must be created from the elements that are consistent with this ecosystem so there are other spirits with other spirit bodies from other dimensions they cannot be called men because their bodies were not sourced from the earth are we together now that is why Satan and every other spirit has to depend on man for as long as there is one man on earth who is under the influence of this software aeon the thinking pattern of this age it now strengthens Satan and he can look like he has dominion over man but you need to understand this God gave the earth to man the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord and the earth has he given to the sons of men John chapter 5 please God is speaking to us John chapter 5 we begin our reading from verse 1 pay attention to this story and this after this there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem follow closely now verse 2 give us verse 2 please 
Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep, by the sheep market, a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches, three. It says, in this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the movement of the water. Notice what they are waiting for. The Bible says, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatever disease he had. Isn't it amazing that this was not a parable? It actually happened on earth. A certain man was there which had an infirmity for how long? 38 years. What was this man's problem? Verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? He's asking him a question. Watch the man's reply. The impotent man answered and said to him, Sir, I have no man. He never said I have no energy. My limitation is I have potential to be healed, but I'm not connected to any man that can provide the leverage. Sir, in these 38 years, I take responsibility. I am knowledgeable enough to know that I have no man. When the water is troubled to put me into the pool, he said, but while I am coming, another stepped down before me. It is logical to assume that that another had a man to help him. Because based on this scripture, men could help men enter the water. If men could not help men, he would not say, I have no man to help me. Somebody who had a man to help him gave him the leverage and the acceleration to enter the pool first. I have no man. This is the story of many people. Please look up. Why have you not risen till now? Why has your life not changed till now? And the correct answer for many people is I have no man. There is nobody, I, am not con I have not placed value on strategic relationships enough to provide a leverage for my home, my company, my ministry, my business. Jesus did not look at him and say you are a liar and you are speaking nonsense. He knew that the man was right. Verse 8, Jesus now looks at him and says, you got it right. You have no man. But now here is a man. Rise up. Since you were attentive enough to understand the value of men, I have come as a man. Rise up. Take up your bed and walk. Hmm. I have no man. Why has Abuja not opened up for you for decades in spite of being born and bred here? I have gifts, I have degrees, but I have no man. Let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen. May I remind you again that all blessings come from God, but they come through men to men. Please, everybody shout it. Say from God. Through men. To men. Amen. One more time. Say from God. From God. Through men. Amen. To men. Amen. You can complete this sentence with anything. From God. Through men. To men. That means if God says yes. And a man to partner with him says no. Yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. It will not manifest here. When God says yes. The spirit. The bride must also say yes. For years to manifest. The spirit and the bride say come. Not the spirit alone. Not the bride alone. Please look up. There are many of us right now who are stranded in life and destiny. And the honest explanation is captured in the story of the man at Bethesda. I have no man. If there was a man, a relationship that could provide a leverage... Even though you were knocking by 12 midnight, a friend will come out and give you bread. Are we connecting to the story now? I have no man. I have no friend. I have no helper. Why is ministry stunted like this? That easy things look difficult. I have no man who can mentor me and open me up and show me the dynamics of excelling with integrity. 
Why are you so financially incapacitated? Because of 10,000, someone in your family is about to lose his life. I have no man that has invested their interest in my family enough to erode this unnecessary pain. Why are you running around? What, how much is the rent? 500,000, 200,000. Why have you not paid it then? I mean, I don't have a job. That is not the right answer. I have no man. There is always a man who is behind the results that men produce by God. Listen carefully. The nation of Israel had God for 430 years. They were still slaves. God was there, but they were still slaves. You thought that because God was there, they would magically go out. 430 years with God. And yet the man who will work in partnership with God had not showed up and they remained slaves. Even though there was prophecy to Abraham that their time lapse was 400 years exactly. 30 years was added because of the delay in training the man who would come. Until that man showed up, Moses stands before Pharaoh and says, Thus said the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. God was saying, now is the time for their exodus. But a man had to stand before Pharaoh. It was not God that appeared before Pharaoh, but he backed the man that he sent. Please look at me. Let me tell you the truth. Your life can be put in indefinite pain, regret, perpetual circles of defeat and lack of fulfillment simply because you have no man. No wonder the Bible says in the multitude of men is a king's honor. Not in the vastness of the palace. Not in the dexterity of the treasury. When you read the book of Esther, the Bible tells us that King Ahasuerus was a great king. He was king over 127 provinces. Watch this. The kingdom was about to split into two because one man, in this case a woman, Vashti, was going to misbehave in the kingdom. There was no war. The treasuries were not looted. There was no disobedience from the military men. But one woman was about to cause trouble in that kingdom. Men are powerful, more powerful than what you know. Most of us will choose many other things and leave men. Please look up. Do you know that everything you call business or commerce today only finds its value because there is a man? Take all the men on earth out of the earth. Leave all the banks open, including the ATM that does not have money. Leave it with the ATM card. Open up CBN and the vaults. Open everything there. Will it profit you? Are we together now? Yes. Do you know why Cain cried and said, my cause is too great? Something was put upon his life that will make no man to come near him again. That was a punishment. It was not that the beast of the earth would eat him. Something was put upon him and he said, every man that sees me will kill me. And God said, no, I will put a mark upon you. In all of your punishment, I will still give you the benefit of relationship. And the Bible says, Cain built a city and named it after his son. He could have the benefit of relationship and there was a future for him. In spite of his rebellion and the curse of God upon him. Can I tell you, all hope is never lost for a man who has a man. Let me say it again. All hope is never lost for a man who has a man by his side in addition to the God of heaven. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from. And then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall.
Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.